So hi everyone, I'm Naomi, dating and relationship coach, and today we are talking about how to talk to a man. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And today I am speaking with Jeffrey Levine. Jeffrey Mark Levine is a relationship coach, an author, a podcaster, and a trained mediator. Jeffrey works with individuals and couples in how to change their communication styles that are really wrecking their relationships and how to help them create that love and intimacy and connection again. And what I love about Jeffrey is in his work, he offers concrete practical strategies, which is what we need. We need tools, we need ways, we need to know how to navigate the rough waters of being in a couple. Hi, Jeffrey, welcome. Nice to be here. Thank you so much. So Jeffrey, um, in your book, How to Talk to a Man, and for anyone listening, I will link Jeffrey's book in the description and the comments below. Um, there was something you said in there. You said you spoke about your wife and you said, I didn't mind she had ideas about how to help me be a better husband, which made me smile because that, you know, I, what woman doesn't have ideas <laughs> about her man can be a better husband. But you said, I minded how she said it when she said it how much she said it and how often she said it. Tell me a little bit more about that and how her communication came across to you. Um, yeah, tell me tell me a bit more about that. Yeah, so, you know, what I have to say is that was in retrospect, as I started to figure out what was going wrong and um, my role in that, I realized that my natural or or fallback position was always to explain and defend. And so when something would come up, I had to defend myself, even when I thought that there was some good suggestion. And then when I was kind of with myself in my own quiet time, I, I would realize, hmm, well, that kind of made sense. But I really didn't have the skills or the tools to come back to her and say, okay, you, you know, you were right. Um, and so as I started to learn how to communicate better, I realized and looking back, it's about the explaining and defending on my part that um, kind of roadblocked the whole thing. Mm. Now, the, the, the flip side of it is like, what is her responsibility? How was she talking to me mm -hmm. that was... Um, causing that i don't want to say i don't want to blame her for for causing it but it's kind of an interaction that's is going both ways and i realized that it what was going on was it was kind of an attack it was kind of a, a blaming thing going on and so we were doing this to each other and when i realized that then it helped me kind of dive in and inspired me to dive in and figure out how to do it better does that does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, something else in your book, you were saying, you know, about it's been said when we offer constructive criticism, the other person hears it as you suck and here's why. And I've heard that so much with men. You know, women say, well, I'm just telling him that there's a better way to do it or that right. he got it wrong or I want him to do more of this. But he thinks that he can never get anything right. So there's yes. this frustration um, so tell me a little bit more about that, about how you say men prefer to be seen as the solution and not the problem, whereas often when we communicate with men, are we kind of giving them the message they're the problem? Yeah, and, and I would say, honestly, that it it goes both ways. Um, we When we have some bad communication habits, both men and women tend to do this to each other. And it, it this actually leads very nicely to kind of the, the overarching um, piece of this. And that is that in order to have these conversations, these tougher conversations, um, the, the conversations about what I need or what I feel, there has to be emotional safety. And when there isn't this overall arching emotional safety, then every one of these conversations are are fraught and we're feeling like we have to fight back. So I do think it gets back to emotional safety, which I, I know, you know, you and I talked about that we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but I think that that's really the the crux of the the whole issue. 
Yeah, absolutely. So people feel that they are free to communicate um, openly mm -hmm. because if you don't feel safe, if you feel like you're going to be shut down mm -hmm. or someone's just going to shut down themselves, you know, they're not going to want to listen or they're going to tell you you're wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and I hear from so many women who say that they, um, when they... The, I've noticed with women, a lot of women either fear speaking up and they don't speak up at all, but then they start feeling resentful or they speak up in a way that's that can be construed and come across as quite aggressive. Like, mm -hmm. this is my truth and I'm going to speak my truth and I don't care and damn the consequences. Mm -hmm. And I don't think women intend to hurt just as I don't believe men do. But it's what I'm noticing is there is either not speaking up at all. Mm -hmm. not feeling like a woman has a voice and speaking, which is in a way that's more demanding and mm -hmm. um, angry, you know, mm -hmm. when the resentment comes through and what I'm really interested in. And yes, definitely. We spoke about you sharing three of the secrets from your book. You have six, six secrets on creating more emotional intimacy and connection in your relationships through communication. Um, and I'm really excited to hear three of those because I do feel like the work you do is like the bridge between those two ways of communicating that don't work mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yes I'd love to hear more about how you can create emotional safety cool they yeah it's um I, I, like I said I think this is the kind of the the crux of the issue you know you brought up that um uh, women often feel like they either don't want to speak up at all or that it's going to come out, you know, just, you know, really harshly and and, and demanding like. And I, I do think that that boils down to kind of the, the concepts of um, emotional intelligence. And so it does start with kind of an, an inner journey, inner work where each of us, and this is true for both men and women, need to take a look at like, what's going on with me? Where, you know, what's the feeling that I'm having? Where does the trigger come from? And I I think that what has happened is that in the past, in each of our past, we've reacted from these triggers and we've gotten a negative reaction back. So that's caused us to either, you know, to hold it in or just, you know, blurt it out because that's the only way I can get heard. So I do think it starts with, you know, when you're talking about creating emotional safety, it's going to start with what's going on with me for real. Like, wh where's that trigger coming from? And then making a conscious choice to manage those emotions, because there is this moment where we do have a choice. And, you know, when we when we talk about reacting to our emotions, you know, it's the, you know, the, the lizard brain, it's been described that I'm just kind of just reacting. We want to learn to tame that. We want to learn how to look at what's going on and then choose a response. And so that's the, the, where it starts from a personal standpoint. And then you also want to consider what's going on in the room, what's going on with the other person you're talking to. How is what I'm saying affecting them or how will it affect them based on what I know about their needs, especially if it's you've been in a relationship for a while, you get a sense of if I say this or if I do this this way, this is the kind of reaction I'm going to get. So managing that, knowing what's going on over there and making some choices so that you get the response that you want and what you are offering will be heard. Um, does that does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And and what you know, what I would say can be clues to that clues to hang on a minute, there's something going on with me. It's not just me upset with maybe what my partner has done or not done or something missing in the relationship, but actually there's something more going on is when the feeling is very, very, very strong. Mm -hmm. You know, when it seems to kind of, you get that kind of the red mist of anger or the incredibly emotional. Mm -hmm. And then that's a really great clue that it is something historical Mm -hmm. that's being triggered by the current event and yes. you know that can that can happen from just from the dating process can't it some mm -hmm. people don't even enter into love because those triggers are so strong um 
you know, even just meeting different people on the dating scene can trigger those feelings. No, nope, I'm out. Right. Communication. Yes. Like it's like, you know, what I'm also hearing from what you're saying, it's it's like by having that self-awareness, we're saying to our partner, you're not 100 percent responsible, responsible for my happiness. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be taking some responsibility um, for some of these feelings that are coming up and yeah, and the satisfaction well, I'm feeling. We can we can take it even a step further, and if we you know go into one of the other secrets that I, that I talk about, and that's the whole concept of nonviolent communication. And you know, in a, in a nutshell, it's like you you want to avoid language that's going to cause the other person to feel like they need to defend themselves. So any kind of blaming or accusing or name calling, labeling, you know, you're this, you know, that that's going to cause walls to go up. So we want to avoid that. And that's kind of like, yeah, duh, we should have avoid those. But there's some something else in there, and it, this gets to your point about you know taking 100 res, uh, responsibility or 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 not, or not thinking that it's all about them, and that is when you're having a response, when you're feeling triggered, you're having a feeling because some need didn't get met, and that is such that for me was such a huge kind of insight, and it's and it's I think a really important concept that we're all trying to get our needs met, even the person pissing you off across, you know, in the, the other person in the room, they're trying to get their needs met too. So we're all operating from a place of getting our needs met. And when our needs aren't being met, we have darker feelings. We're frustrated, we're overwhelmed, we're uh, disappointed, and it's being expressed as anger. So when these feelings come up, to take a moment, a pause, and try to get a sense of what need do I have that's not being met? And then what you're doing is you're taking responsibility and realizing that, yeah, there's something going on over there. But what has really happened is that I have a need that's not been met. And this person has, you know, helped trigger that, but it is all mine. Yeah, absolutely. So using nonviolent communication, how could potentially could someone communicate that need? Because um, I totally, I love what you're saying about noticing yourself. What need is it I'm not getting met? And then mm -hmm. the difficulty, and often I find women who come to me find is like, how do I communicate that need? Because when I don't communicate it, I feel cross and resentful that he's not doing it. And then the poor guy sort of, there's this, there's this invisible unspoken expectation that he can just feel and he doesn't know what it is. Yeah. How do I communicate it in a way that, will elicit his, you know, warmth and consideration. So well, we yes. Okay. So that's, that's a great question. What I would say is that you, you just want to communicate it in a way that d doesn't make him responsible. So what I would say, you would, you would just start with, you know, I'm, I'm noticed that I'm feeling really frustrated right now by what's going on between us and what's here. And, and I, I really need some, attention or i really need some understanding that this particular situation it's, it's a little bit hard if we were not talking about a specific situation but to actually say i notice what's going on with me is that i'm feeling really frustrated because i need to know that we're um going to get you know that we're going to go out to dinner at this time and um that helps me feel prepared as opposed to getting mad at him because it got over too early or too late or whatever. And I'm just making some, something off the top of my head, but it's looking for what is that underlying need. And this is, I have to be honest, that when, when people are first introduced to this, it can be challenging. And when I'm working with people, I, you know, you know actually give them some handouts. It's like, okay, let, you know, here's like the different kinds of basic human needs that we all share. And they, it may, there may be some uh, frustration in, in not getting these met, but you know, here's the realm we're talking about. I think that the mistake that gets made is it, we can, um, it can be languaged as, well, I have a need. My need is for you to be on time. 
you know, and that's kind of missing the point. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we give other people the power for of uh, the power over our own, our own sense of happiness, peace, serenity, you know, then suddenly we are powerless. We're always reliant on other people showing up in a way we want them to, mm -hmm. um, which, which is tricky. However, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, um, a common theme that comes up is women, you know, maybe if a women are dating and a guy to start with is very romantic and he's organizing loads of dates. And then as the relationship progresses, that gets less and less. So definitely women, the resentment comes in when they don't speak up. Mm -hmm. Um but well, let me ask, they... let me. I want to ask you a question here because it kind of triggered one for me. So, in that particular si situation, what is the need that is not being met for her? Do you think? I would say the need to feel seen and cherished and loved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a way that you know, like someone's special woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then if if he's not doing that, then there's this feeling of resentment or disappointment or sadness. Yes, absolutely. So then how how do we how do we language that? Now I I, I think what I hear you saying is that the real challenge is, is when it's in a dating situation, they don't know each other that well, they haven't been in relationship for a while. So it's a little harder for her to say, um, I I I love it when you um, text me every day, or I love it when you're planning the uh, uh, when our dates in advance, or whatever's missing. So sharing the thing that she wants as opposed to what he's not doing. Yes, which is very much about what you talk about as as about approaching a man like he's the solution to the problem and not the problem. Yeah. And that's, I would say, where that emotional self-awareness comes in of going, I'm feeling resentful because I think quite what, and you spoke about it with the kind of primal brain is we react and go, you're not doing this. You used to, especially when a relationship has started, you yeah. never do anything romantic anymore. You used to always do, me, 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 me. and I bet any guy even hearing the tone of my voice there goes, Ugh, I don't want to hear that tone of voice. Yeah. Whereas actually what yours, I hear what you're saying is we don't seem to go on many dates anymore. I feel, you know, I always felt really lovely and special when we went on dates and I feel quite yeah. sad about that. Yeah. So I've got yeah. the first bits of your nonviolent communication. How would I continue to say that? How would a woman continue with that? Or was that pretty good? I, I, I thought that was a, a, a really good Start, you know, really good start. I mean, so much of it is being able to respond in the moment to what's coming up. So then what does he say? Does he actually do it? Does he actually start to show up? Or does he start to um, uh, express some disappointment in what he's hearing from you? Because it's so interesting, because when you were saying saying that, and I, and I started thinking, okay, as the conscious guy, you know, his thing would should be to step up and say, I, I hear that you're really frustrated. You know, I'm a really hear that there's, there's something here that's not working. Let's talk about that. You know, and that's the, you know, my whole thing, everything is talk aboutable is like, you know, we, we both, we all want to rise, rise up. And I, and I realize when people are dating that that's, that's a challenge. Um, but I would stay on the same path. Um, I don't think demanding what you want is going to work. And um, I think what it boils down to is this particular guy, after you, you've expressed what you need, if he is not showing up in that way, then he is not a strategy for getting that need met. Mm, I love when I first heard you speaking about that. I think it was in a class that you ran and you said something about what strategy are you using to get your needs met? And and I absolutely love that because so often women go back to the same person to get a need met where they've never really got that need met from that person. Yes. But there's a hope. It's like there's an inner, there's a little hope there that suddenly, yes. and, but, and then the resentment builds because. Yes. But, you know, we could talk loads about that, but I would love to hear the third secret you want to share, which was around listening. Yes. And, and that is, um, 
just basically a, a, it's either this or that like where are you in your head when when you're listening and i and i labeled it outer listening and inner listening and that the inner listening is when you what's going on in your head is actually taking precedent over what's going on over there so and you know i give a couple of clues if if you're kind of worried about the a decision that's being made over there or if you're trying to fix the situation over there or or you're coming up with a solution that was, you know, kind of denying their feelings. Oh, you know, that wasn't wasn't so bad. Or look on the bright side, um, you know, or, or giving advice. Any of those uh, ways of communicating that um, is um, showing that you're more concerned about what's going on with you than you are about what's going on over there is what I call inner listening. And the outer listening is... I kind of gave, gave an example in the thing we were just talking about where I would say to you, oh, it, it sounds like you're really frustrated. You know, you, you don't like how it's been going. You know, tell me more about that. That's an outer listening. It's like I'm over there. I'm listening, you know, quietly. I've got good eye contact and and I'm, I'm totally present. Very often it it um, it's manifests as reflective listening, like what I hear you saying is, or let me make sure I understand you. And when you're in a difficult conversation, an argument or a disagreement or something where it's gotten a little bit heated, using that reflective listening is a way to show that you are actually over there, that you are that you are actually hearing the other person. So by saying, okay, what I hear you saying is, and, you know, give it back to them. Or I, I just want to clarify for myself to make sure I understand you. Um, and, you know, this is um, this, you know, what I've, I've noticed in, in, in coaching couples and, and individuals that it's a, it's a learned skill and it's a little bit awkward at first, but once they start doing it, it slows down the conversation, which is important to do. I think it dials down the heat of the conversation, which is essential. So that's, you know, in a nutshell, the difference between, you know, what I call inner listening and outer listening. Yeah, I love it. And and all everything you're talking about to me is is about creating emotional safety. And mm -hmm. it feels like, you know, the difference between that kind of defensive, argumentative communication is like two kids in the sandbox, you know, chucking sand at each other on opposite sides. Whereas actually what you're talking about there without a listening is like, we're a team, let's solve this together. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and for anyone who has ever experienced that kind of communication, even if it's just a few moments, um, it's incredible. It makes you feel incredibly safe. You know, it's it's yeah. wonderful. Jeffrey, yeah. thank you so much. It's been so great to talk to you. It's been my pleasure. It's really fun. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. Thank you for sharing everything. And um, I'm going to share with you all Jeffrey's book, How to Talk to a Man. I will link it in the description below. And I highly recommend it. It's It's got very, very clear tools, very clear strategies and ways of just speaking and communicating. Um, so I will pop that. I will pop Je uh, Jeffrey's website addresses in the link below. Um, and that's everything, I think. I don't think I've missed anything. Lovely. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. We'll do this again. Yeah, thank you again. This is great. Thank you.